The German deserter took off his spectacles and pressed the lenses firmly together. Then he tore off a twig and chewed it in his mouth. Then he applied the stirred leaves to the edges of the lenses. When the area around the lenses had dried out, the soldier takes a hollowed out blade of grass and inserts it into the lens. Then he slowly poured fresh saliva into the lens. A simple convex lens was made. The man finds a piece of moss and lights it on fire by concentrating the light from the convex lens. To keep the flame burning, he added more and more dry wood. When the flame had burned out, the soldier poured a cup of hot, cool water over it. The temperature difference was so great, the rocks around the chains exploded. But this was not enough to break the chains. So he repeated the process, and finally the rivets grew longer and longer. This made the man's desire to survive even stronger. Then he began to add more and more wood to the fire. The fire burned for two days and two nights, and even the weeds in the neighborhood were all gone. At this point, the man poured in the only cup of water he had left. After clearing the rocks around him, he started pulling back on the chain as hard as he could. But the rivet didn't budge. Seeing that after all this time, nothing had happened, the man lay on the ground. The next day, it occurred to him that he had a few spare cartridges. So he opened the cartridges and poured the gunpowder around the rivets. Then he put the rest of the licorice in. Then he covered it with a rock and set it on fire. The next moment, the Nazi deserter was chained to the rock with a shovel. After the gunpowder had burned, he yanked on the chain and kicked it hard. The shovel seemed to have loosened. Then he hooked a sniper's rifle to a rock not far away. Then he hit the shovel with his sniper rifle. He continued to smash it from day to night, and finally, gripping the chain, he broke free. He was free, but not completely. If he didn't remove the chains from his feet, he remained a deserter in captivity. So, free, Tom began to look around. He soon found a house not far from here. Through the scope, he saw the woman who owned the house. The woman noticed him too, but didn't care. So Tom came to her with his gun, hoping to borrow a tool to open the chains. But the woman was from the lap tribe and didn't understand him. So Tom made the woman understand him by making a lot of physical gestures. Then he went back to the house to get the tools. Then Tom noticed Soviet uniforms outside the house. He was instantly alerted. He broke into the house with his 98 KS and found a wounded Red Army man inside. The three of them had different positions, different languages. But Tom liked to talk a lot and each didn't understand the other. Tom didn't want to kill the Soviets. He's a Finnish university student who was forced by the international situation to join the Nazi camp. Now his idea was to go home, but the Soviet didn't know his intentions. He thought that the two countries were at war and that this was the right time to make a career out of it. So he grabbed the table knife and went after him. He stabbed him when he wasn't looking, but Tom kicked him out of the way. Tom then explained that he was forced to do it. He didn't want to fight, but he only got an icy sentence from Jack. The woman also began to persuade the two men to stop fighting. After this, the two men lived here. The woman not only cooks, but also helps them to wash clothes. The two men had nothing to do, but to help the woman in the darkened daytime. An accident was about to happen. At that moment, several fighter jets suddenly flew over the sky. The two men were nervous and went over to find out what was going on. When they arrived, they found no survivors. Tom guessed by the style of the plane that it was a Soviet plane used to distribute leaflets. He ran out of fuel and had no choice but to land here. Jack, on the other hand, hid a pistol behind his back. Then he said to Tom, When Tom saw the contents of the leaflet, he was overjoyed. It said, in the international language, that Germany had surrendered and the war was finally over. But he didn't know how to express it, so he decided to smash his gun in front of Jack. Jack was in over his head and thought he was going to kill himself. He shot Tom directly in the face. Jack took one look at the flyer and realized he was in trouble. He rushed forward to stop Tom's bleeding, then carried Tom back to the woman's house. He carried Tom back to the woman's house and helped her work day and night. Tom gradually recovered. From then on, the two men worked together during the day and at night. It was a happy life. They took off their uniforms and changed into the woman's handmade clothes. They decided to find their own way home and disappeared in the snow. As winter turned to spring, the woman gave birth to two children and told her son this romantic and secretive story. And the twins are named Jack and Tom. This is the end of the movie. We'll see you in the next video.